started, he wanted to express his feelings. You know, so that was that was the poem about. And uh, that poem, the spiritual love of God, the whole written with RC. And uh, the original copy is right here. According to the history records, after he died, also he met uh, two other gentlemen, and he had the, uh, he had a relationship with those two people yeah. as well, and they were rolling together as well. And when Turkey became republic, 19 after 1923, the Turkish government, they closed all the religious uh, schools in the city. This is the only one which is allowed by Ataturk. And they kept it open. And all those Sufis, they come together, they whirl together. And the place where they whirl is Dergah. That's the name of their place. And uh, there are some dresses that they wear while they are whirling. A white dress. The white dress represents shroud. <coughs> and they are uh, wearing a cubic hat, brownish color. Those are also, you're going to see a few of them over there. This symbolize death. And also, uh, when they are whirling, always their hands, one is towards the sky, the other one towards the soil. Why? We are like the transfers, getting everything from God, giving to the soil, to the human beings. We are just in between the human beings and uh, God, transferring the love of God to everybody. And those kind of buildings, first of all, the one over here where you can see the bell, that was for the, they eat together. And this is where they eat, where they cook. And at the same time, there's a platform on the, on the, at the center where they can whirl to. And while they are whirling, there are some uh, musical instruments, oud and saz, uh, and also kanun. Those are it doesn't, none of them has the English version names. You're going to see the instruments inside. And so, with that classical Sufist music, they start whirling. Take a look at those little minarets and little domes. Can you see them? Mm -hmm. Each dome belongs to one room. And one minaret for one person, uh, one room. And normally there's an exhibition right now inside. You can take a look at the writings outside, like the old uh, Sultan's kaftan dresses, everything located there. But those were all individual rooms for the Sufists. All those Sufists, first of all, if you are, if you decided to become a Sufist, you have to finish everything in your mind. You have to clear your soul, material life. material life. That's why you leave your family, everything, you go inside the room for 62 days. The only thing that they give to you, water, plain bread, that's it. Like a monastery life, and also <coughs> you read Quran, the only book given to you, Quran, you memorize Quran, and after that process, if you are 100%, sure that you left the material life then you can start serving for the derga so you become as a sufist was like a student then the dervishes starts teaching uh, how to teach you know how to use your soul your energy and also using your soul to help the others all those rooms are for them Take a look at the fountain. When Mevlana, before he died, he didn't want uh, the Turkish people to build such a huge tumultuous burial place like this. He didn't want. The one of the sentences that he mentioned, 
my burial will be the skies, soil, everywhere, doesn't matter. Don't let anybody to know where my burial is. This is what he uh, said about his uh, death. But during the Ottoman Empire, especially the base of the second, he wanted to build such a burial here and the fountain later on, different Ottoman Sultan built that one. And so those are additionally built. Right here, we are going to be seeing at the entrance, at the central located place where you can see the two cross colored tiles. In the beginning, they built a small dome with the two cross tiles, mm -hmm. the burial with Mevlana and his father. Later on, they decided to enlarge it and they decided to convert it into a mosque. Take a look at the mosque. That mosque is additionally added to the burial. It's not related with the building, so separately. So that one uh, belongs to the, uh, the burial. And there are some burials over here. Take a look at Murat Pasha. Who is this Fatima Fatima? Murat Pasha. Murat Pasha. Pasha is like governor. Governor. Governor who lived in uh, 16th century. Some followers from the royal family members, they wanted to make some donations. So uh, it is not easy to be buried into yes, as exactly. into as important yeah. place. So that's why, take a look at that one, Sinan Pasha, who lived in the 16th century, yeah. that was one of the royal family members. He was a soldier, he was buried there. And also Fatma Hatun in 16th century, another one. So you have to be from the uh, Ottoman Empire family. Prestigious family. And yes, is it, a, it is still a prestige. For instance, the last uh, president, he was buried in the same cemetery where Suleiman the Magnificent is. He wanted to be buried. So that's a prestige. So you're going to see those plastic bags, plastic covers for our shoes. So uh, here it goes. We're going to go inside. I'm going to call it out the original. Royal Kitchen Mask Mask here on top of the area Place Kitchen